next coming up is uh, Stephanie Vaughn. Um, Stephanie is actually the CFO of Elixir. Uh, Elixir is actually a blockchain project from David Chom, uh, who was the founder of eCash and DigiCash, uh, basically one of the first, uh, I think it is the first digital currency out there. So with that, please give a, uh, a warm welcome to Stephanie Vaughn. Thank you. Hold on a second. I'm just going to wait for the slides to get up here. Okay. <laughs> well, so I, um, I guess as just said, I work with David Chom, and David's the CEO of Elixir, which is his new project. So in addition to kind of creating the first digital currency, David also worked with Mixed networks. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but he invented mixed networks in the 1970s. So the kind of the technology behind mixed mixed networks and the technology behind digital bearer instruments, which I'll discuss, is what goes into um, his new project, Elixir. So that's sort of the introduction I just gave. All right. So this is the first time I've given this presentation. Normally David gives it, um, and this is kind of my take on it. And I'm trying to make it a little bit more finance oriented, so just bear with me. So when David opens, he normally talks about blockchain's main chance to go mainstream. And by mainstream, he means what will it take for blockchain to have mass consumer adoption? And these are the four things he's identified. The first is speed, and that's payments and messaging from initiation to completion in seconds. The next is privacy, so unlinked transactions, private, and this is sort of like NSA level privacy. So if someone was looking at the entire internet through this, um, they wouldn't be able to see any transactions going back and forth. The next one is scalability, being able to process visa level transactions. And the last is security. And that's creating a robust platform so that no one can kind of break into the platform and no one can see those transactions. And he's created, uh, he thinks it needs to be quantum resistant sort of attack. So these are the four things he's identified as blockchain's main chance to go mainstream. And again, by mainstream, we mean the same performance that you have on your mobile phone. So like being able to run all the same apps on your mobile phone, but instead of it being through centralized agencies, it's decentralized or it's on the blockchain. Um, and then to truly close these um, transactions to finality. So a lot of people may have Coinbase on their phone, but it's, it's not the same because they're not close to finality in seconds. So kind of backing up um, after identifying those, those four things for blockchain to go mainstream, um, I just wanted to discuss uh, digital bearer instruments. So I think everyone's familiar with cash. <laughs> so it's a, f it's a form of physical currency. Um, and the person who has the cash, or if you have money in your wallet, you own that money. If somebody takes that money from you, then they own that money. Um, and bearer instruments. So a bearer instrument or a bearer security is the same as uh, cash, essentially. Whoever owns the bearer instrument owns it. So David created digital bearer instruments, which essentially are like cash. And then that turned into the company a DigiCash. So digital bearer securities and digital cash. So if someone owns, again, a digital bearer security, they own it. So someone can easily steal it. So when David had the company DigiCash back in the 1980s, he had to find a place that you could trust, like to hold your cash. And so where can you trust to hold your cash? You can, you can trust a bank. So everyone accused him, I think, of having a sort of centralized platform because they put these digital bearer securities in banks. Does that make sense to everybody? Because this is an important concept to understand when you kind of understand like what the blockchain is here. So again, um, there's no good way you can trust them with your cash. There's no good way you can trust someone with a digital bearer security. So there's a different way that trust has been built with Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin uses public key signatures on a decentralized ledger. So the trust is built from the decentralization here. And you could think of Bitcoin as working a little bit like a check. So when you send a transaction on Bitcoin, um, you go in, you put in a wallet address, you send the transaction, and then all of the computers, thousands of computers across the world are trying to win a race in order to 
write the next block, and that block will be what writes the transactions. And that sort of decentralization and the winning of the block um, to be written is like where trust is established. But the problem is that that takes a long time. So it can take um, minutes and even hours to send a transaction. So if you went to somebody's, if you were trying to sell a car on Craigslist and then you went over there and you tried to complete a Bitcoin transaction to buy that car or sell that car, um, it, could take, it could take hours and you wouldn't know how long the platform would do or uh, take at any given time. So Bitcoin works like sending a check and waiting for it to come in. And I identified the problem here before is that lasts a really long time. So that goes to David's sort of elixir method, so he, which is different than Bitcoin. And so he uses a coin-based method is, is a way to explain it. So it's more like handing somebody cash or moving coins around than writing a check. OK. Um, so that brings me to privacy now. So there's different ways to establish privacy on a network. These are, um, I don't know who's a cryptographer here. This may get a little technical, but there's fully homomorphic encryption. That's like using ciphertext to encrypt something. There's zero knowledge proofs, which they use in Zcash, a, a privacy coin. Um, and then there's multi-party computations. And multi-party computations is where parties jointly compute a function over their inputs while keeping those inputs private. Parties or servers are decentralized, establishing trust. So it still has the same trust because the, uh, all the servers are decentralized. And it, it's trust and sort of privacy at the same time because they have to work together in order to write the next block or, or complete the transaction. So multi-party computations, again, the parties jointly uh, compute a function over their inputs while keeping those input private. So if you see the little picture, and we have it on our website, you can see um, those, are, those are nodes, but eight nodes will work together to write that transaction at the same time, and that's a multi-party computation. And that's different than what Bitcoin does, which is has a, a bunch of decentralized servers, and one of them wins the right to write that block and then gets the uh, reward. So, um, and then when they, these multiple servers move the coins around when they, when they work together. So again, it established both trust and privacy at the same time. So there's the, the two fundamental innovations in our technology. The first one, again, I just went through, which is these multiple nodes. And the second one is that all public key operations are pre-computed. So, um, Public private key operations in Bitcoin take a, traditionally a long time. Um, and so David has created a way to sort of do a pre computation for this. So it allows you to run a mixed network or a network. Um, one of the biggest examples of a mixed network is a network like Tor. But traditionally, it's taken a really long time. But because the nodes pre compute the, the mixed network, it can go through really quickly on each node as each transaction is built. So what happens in our network is at you'll have eight different nodes that are chosen out of a set of thousands and thousands of nodes. And those nodes come to a consensus and write the next block. And then a second later, another eight nodes are chosen randomly. And they write the, uh, or come to consensus. They all check each other, and then they write the next block. So it works a lot faster because of that. And it's more private because of the pre computation. You can get sort of Tor level security. All right. So the second part of the second uh, innovation is uh, only hash functions are used in real time per transaction on our network. So a hash function is a one way function. So that's essentially, you can think of a hash function as what the nodes do between each other to move the coins around. So hash functions are looked at differently in other blockchains, but this is how we think about hash functions. So uh, Bitcoin um, uses public key signatures for each transaction to move an agreed amount upon a ledger, and we use the hashes to move around these coins. All right, so here is, <laughs> in summary, Bitcoin uses uh, public-private key encryption and proof of work, resulting in a slow transfer of value. Elixir uses a multi-party computation, which establishes both trust through decentralization 
and privacy, securing the coins from being stolen by the computers that own them. And then Elixir uses mixed networks and a pre-computation um, to complete a secure transaction. All right, does that, anybody have any questions? I know that's a little, might be a little confusing. <laughs> How far along have you got in with this? Um, so it's it's uh, working in Alphanet right now. So it, a project was originally an academic project that started two years ago, and it was coded there um, as sort of a way to do write a mixed messenger. And then um, as a company, it started a couple years ago, and they layered on the payments for this. So David's vision is to have a WeChat sort of messaging and payments app on your phone that's completely decentralized. Um, and although people are talking about privacy before, um, said that it's not important or, you know, it's, we give Facebook our data willingly. And I think in the U.S. that's certainly true. But in other countries, it's important for uh, people's government not to have data. And well, WeChat's a really good example of that. I have a question. Um, I'm curious how Elixir um, has evolved from his original vision of eCash and uh, did you cash? Yep. So I guess as I like talked about before, the original kind of vision in DigiCash was this these sort of digital bearer securities um, that was put in different banks, so it could be used as a payments. But the problem with that it was that it, like anybody could steal the coins, so they had to be held by banks. So he's found a way to use a multi-party computation and then speed up the multi-party computation through a pre-computation, um, or speed up the mixed network by using a pre-computation to actually make it possible to do this, whereas before it wasn't. And David jokes because he came up with mixed networks in the 1970s, and he said he spent 30 years uh, uh, just like hoping somebody else would figure out a way to speed them up, and he had to do it himself. So. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, everybody. Please give a round of applause for Stephanie Vaughn.